Hello and welcome to the final qualifying round of the F1 New Balance Esports Series 2019 season. We're in Canada again today with the Xbox drivers as we continue this incredible journey for the third year of F1 Esports. My name is Justin Sutton and joining me, it's Chris Buxton. Hello everybody, mothers, fathers, daughters, sons, brothers and sisters. This is indeed the third and final race off that precede the live events that will come up next month or in the next few months. So Canada, once again, it is time for the Xbox One drivers to take to the stage. And uh, we haven't been disappointed in the races that led up to this point. As this is more your uh, uh, familiar area, Justin, let's uh, you take us through the drivers. Yeah, we've got P1R Brown, a name I'm certainly familiar with, TNT Zonta, Kyle Mitchell as well, CRG A Morso, VSR Infamous, Tom123, CRG Simon, uh, I think a lot of people are very familiar with him. Sorry about that. We've uh, t we're just taking a look at the that started echoing. So I just do the whole intro again. Okay. Check check check. One two one two. Yeah, ready to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello and welcome to the final qualifying round of the F1 New Balance Esports Series 2019 season. We're in Canada again today with the Xbox drivers as we continue this incredible journey for the third year of F1 Esports. My name is Justin Sutton and joining me, it's Chris Buxton. Hello again, everybody, and it is time, as Justin mentioned, for the Xbox One drivers to take to the stage for the third and final race off that precedes the live events next month. Canada once again is our venue, and uh, this should be an amazing race. Our PS4 and PC drivers haven't disappointed, and I, and I fully expect our Xbox One drivers to step up to the plate in the same vein. Yeah, we've got P1R Brown. These are sort of the guys that I'm a bit more familiar with, as uh, the league I usually commentate on is the Xbox platform. Chris is the PC side, so I know a lot of these guys. P1R Brown, TNT Zonta, Kyle Mitchell, CRG Morso, VSR Infamous, Tom123, CRG Simon, Snazzy Evening, uh, who some will remember from last year, EVR Reynolds, TSR Bastek, CRL Rosberg, Maloney88, Kowalski, uh, uh, Jabir, Jabiriar, uh, Hit, Leclerc, Mal, Mali41, TRL Button. So again, as with all of the splits that we've seen this week and uh, the different platforms that we've seen people coming from, we have some new names, some recognizable names as well too. And again, just in case if you missed the first two broadcasts, the numbers next to the driver's names don't actually mean anything. We will have an 18 minute qualifying session for these guys to decide their grid starting position. Indeed, and it's a 50% race that uh, will be awaiting our drivers post qualies so there's going to be a lot of strategy going on and depending on what the weather the weather is not set so we've had mixed conditions for the uh, ps4 guys the uh, pc guys got away with a, uh, a straight dry race we may well have full wets we may well have snow hail and meatballs who knows let's see what the uh, lovely canadian track throws at us 
Yeah, Mally41 clearly excited about the race tonight, as as you would be. Again, as we've said before, just to make it this far is an absolutely massive achievement. And to, to all of the guys that have taken part, uh, they've got to be just thrilled about that. Ciro Rosberg saying he's going to do, do his best and see what comes out. I have uh, no doubt, certainly in his speed, uh, a lot of these guys I've, I've witnessed firsthand just how fast they can be. Tom123 saying, hoping for the best with a swift change to no line. So uh, I guess he's he's actually just learning the game uh, without the racing line assistance, which of course these guys don't have. Uh, a lot of assistance actually turned off in this one. Uh, the tire choices are of course gonna be the same as they were yesterday. The Hypersoft, the Ultrasoft, and the Supersoft tire compounds available to the 18 drivers that we're gonna have compete in this 50% distance around the circuit, Gilles Villeneuve. And what a circuit it is. And as Chris said, it's put up some incredible races already so far this uh, this week, and we're expecting no less from the drivers today, Chris. Absolutely. So as a reminder, that is what the uh, guys have to deal with. 14 turns, 4.3 kilometers, and 35 laps is uh, what our guys have to deal with. And it's going to be very very testing balanced car is what they need but they need to keep their head under pressure that's going to be the biggest thing so before we head down to qualifying let us head to a hot lap as common touchy goodbye the beautiful man to my right is justin sutton Hello, I'm Justin Sutton, and welcome to the circuit Gilles Villeneuve, where we're riding on board with David Tonitza as he navigates his way through the final chicane to start the lap. David moved to the left side of the circuit before crossing the start-finish line to open up the right-hand kink, and then back to the other side to open up turn one using third gear at the apex and keeping a nice tight line to open up turn two. Get on the throttle as early as you dare for the medium-length run down towards turn three. Keep to the left, braking at about 75 meters, and use lots of curb to carry as much speed as physically possible. You're going to be flat out through turn five, but don't run wide as you set yourself up for Turn six, again breaking at about 75 meters, down to third gear once again. Turn seven is crucial for carrying as much speed on the long straight down to the eight nine section, although turn eight, not really an overtaking location in the race. Find your breaking point somewhere in the shadow of that bridge. David goes into third briefly, but back into fourth for the exit of this high speed chicane. Mind the barrier on the right side of the circuit as we have another long run down to the next corner, nearly reaching eighth gear before slamming hard on the brakes for the turn 10 hairpin. A great overtaking location and most important corner on the track as the speed you carry will pay dividends on the run down towards the final chicane. DRS activation line comes at you pretty quick and now you have a few seconds to adjust your brake bias or fiddle with your ERS recovery before the final braking zone of the lap. Heavy braking now, be brave as you flirt with the wall of champions at the exit and then it's just a straight shot to the finish line and that is a lap of the circuit Gilles Villeneuve with David Tanita. So that is uh, the hot lap of the circuit de Gilles Villeneuve and this is what the 2019 uh, images will look like you'll be easily forgiven for thinking it's real life footage nope that is from the upcoming F1 2019 as glorious and beautiful and we really cannot wait for that to land so let us see then what is going to occur when we get into the qualifying good and proper yeah, we're about a month away from the F1 2019 release now, uh, as it releases in June, later in June. So looking forward to that one. It's always exciting. It's uh, releasing earlier this year than it has done in previous years. So people are going to be able to get their hands on it that little bit quicker. It's been in development for a long time as well, too. So lots of new features and uh, the, the F2 cars. I know a lot of people are excited about the F2 cars. So. Uh, but we are going to turn our focus to the Xbox race that we have ahead of us. Again, it is a 50% distance, 35 lap race around the circuit. Joe Villeneuve, we will have the single qualifying session as well, too, in order to determine, determine the starting position for all of our drivers. And uh, really looking forward to this one, Chris. Again, uh, the Xbox side, kind of more the, the side that I know that I'm more familiar with as far as the, the drivers that are competing. But again, lots of fresh faces and some really, really quick guys, too. Yeah, and the uh, fresh races have done very well to uh, yeah, make the establishment work for it, as, as mentioned before. So I am fully expecting the same this time and just uh, waiting to get down into the lobby and see how our drivers are getting on in the qualifying session. Generally, we've been seeing uh, you know, mostly the, the, the sighting laps being done on the harder compound and then the Banzai laps going out mm -hmm. on the softer compound. However, I mean, we saw it yesterday, didn't we, where we got really kind of um i was like confused but a very different strategy from chromatic it was the pc uh, pole man yesterday 
uh, he just went out again and again and again and still put in a storming uh, performance and coming home in third position overall for the VC side. So there is plenty of scope for contra strategies to take place. Oh, yeah, without without a doubt. Um, the vast majority are probably going to be fitting the Hypersofts. We did see some Ultrasoft runners, the likes of uh, Sebastian Job, for example. Uh, Photon, I believe, was the other one that, that was actually starting on the Ultrasofts for the race rather than the Hypersofts, with the Ultrasofts, uh, of course, being the middle step compound out of the three. So they were able to run that a little bit longer, but it didn't seem to make much of a, dis a difference. The Hypersoft runners were able to go pretty deep into the race, as we saw. Um, for most people, a relatively easy one-stop. We did find out yesterday from Chromatic that the primary reason that he actually stopped for a second time was because he had lost some of his front wing during that lag incident between himself and Steve on the back straight on the rundown towards the final chicane. So... I don't, I never, I, initially yesterday, I thought possibly it's a tire issue. You know, he's just used too much up of his tires. But in fact, it was just the front wing that really needed replacing. And not a lot of people ended up going for the two-stop strategy in that race. The one-stop, for the most part, seems to be the one that they're going to go for. But yeah, a nice mixture in the top 10 of Hypersofts and Ultrasofts. Um, certainly the guys that maybe feel a bit more comfortable around here might try to start something, try, try to start the race on the Ultrasofts. But I think we'll see the majority of the top 10 starting on the Hypersofts, just as we saw yesterday for the PC race. And I think we're uh, going to be going to qualifying pretty soon here. Uh, we're just waiting for the final touches. And uh, we'll just continue looking at these lovely shots of the Circuit Chill Phil New from F1 2019. Uh, it's, again, put on a fantastic show for us so far this week. The PS4 side with its mixed conditions, uh, the PC side with its varying strategies, uh, the likes of Gianfranco Giglioli, for example, putting on a fantastic show with that alternate strategy, starting on the Super Softs and then uh, climbing his way up into the top 10 right at the end of the race as well, and making some of the best overtakes as well, too. I got to say, Chris, Giglioli making some amazing overtakes, going from 15th to 11th in yesterday's race. That he did, and uh, also Crow with as you know, that uh, forced mm -hmm. pit stop he had to do to change his front wing and then storming through from, I think it was outside the top 10 uh, after his pit stop, and he absolutely bolted through the field to eventually finish in third position. But there were some brilliant battles throughout the field, actually in our PS4 guys as well. Um, you know, everyone fighting for every position, even though you know they may feel like you know, they're fighting for 14th. So what's the point? We didn't really see anybody give up. We didn't see anybody just settle for where they were. Everybody was really pressing on, and that's a great thing to see. We don't want to just see, oh well, I'm in position, I'll just stay here. Um, whilst Canada is a, is a bit of a tricky circuit to overtake for the most part, the, you've, you've got that sort of big breaking zone into the hairpin and a few of the uh, chicanes but we were seeing dives into you know to turn eight mm -hmm. um, that was catching a lot of people's surprise, surprise and we were seeing it repeatedly as well so it wasn't just a one-off wow that was a banzai move it was being done again and again and again so you know this is what i love seeing as well where drivers are just using their creativity using their imagination but they're not giving up they're thinking okay fine this hasn't quite gone my way what can i do to improve it so we you know we talked about the whole complete picture of a driver you may well be quick but being able to use your your brain your you know to calculate the next move or to how to recover is almost more important than just raw speed yeah, I'm still shocked, actually, by the number of overtakes that we saw into Turn 8. It was easily one of the most popular overtaking locations. In real-life Formula 1, you don't see a whole lot of overtakes there, so you got to really get it wrong through the 6-7 sort of complex in order to get overtaken on the rundown towards Turn 8. But yeah, it was a very, very popular location, uh, in particular yesterday, but we even saw some overtakes as well, even one around the outside at Turn 8. I think uh, we saw on Monday on the PS4 side, that was a particularly important impressive move. I have to say, though, the Renault drivers have been unlucky so far. Um, of course, with uh, it was David Tanitza that started on pole position with his Renault, ended up getting caught up in a lap one inc incident, fighting his way back through the field. Um, and then also the, the other Renault yesterday as well, too, having issues. 
uh, with a chromatic and uh, having to having to pit and having to climb back through the field. Yes, he did end up on the podium, so maybe he wasn't that unlucky. But c c certainly the Renaults we've been seeing having some problems. Pure coincidence, of course, on that one. It's got nothing to do with the cars. The cars are completely e equal for these races, of course. So it's got nothing to do with that. It's just really surprising to see the Renaults taking pole position, struggling in the race, fighting back through. I wonder if we'll see that same sort of thing again today. But uh, yeah, it's been it's been a heck of a journey so far. I'm I'm sad that this is the last race. To be totally honest, I'm really looking forward to uh, to the season proper, though. As again, this is the end of the qualifying stuff, but we still have plenty more of F1 esports in 2019 still to go later this year. Oh, that we do. And th another thing that I love, particularly from from commentating, as well as I get the honor to commentate with beautiful people such as yourself, Mr. Justin, it's and okay. for you lovely fans that uh, that join in for uh, you know tune in for these events. But it's the unpredictability as well. You can easily assume, oh well, you've got it on pole and you're just going to disappear into the distance. It uh, didn't work for Danita. It definitely didn't work for Crow. So you know, it, it, there's just so many things that could possibly happen. Uh, you can't just automatically assume, oh, well, they've, they've got this in the bag. That's, you know, the, as we've said before, the new names making the establishment work for it. You could easily assume that, oh, well, we haven't seen you before. You're not going to do very well. <laughs> Anything but is what uh, these past two races have proven. You just cannot say, that's it, you're done, you're through before the race has begun. It, you know, we, we've seen that uh, circumstance happen uh, in real life motorsport. But uh, yeah, we're just not getting that kind of level of predictability, which is uh, brilliant for us. Let us see if we can get down to some action. Let's uh, get our drivers on the platform that they've worked very hard to get on. And let's get this action underway as quickly as we can. And uh, yeah, hopefully this means we're concluding our F1 Esports podcast. Thanks everybody for <laughs> tuning in. And we'll be actually moving on to the main event. There we go, Hi. we've got we've got the garages on screen or garages i apologize i'll i'll, I'll try to target our audience uh, <laughs> so we'll see them out. and uh based on the weather forecast that we're hearing actually it is going to be a wet race so we <laughs> saw about it was like 10 to 15 laps of rain and inters conditions for the mm -hmm. ps4 side uh no rain whatsoever in qualifying or the race for the pc guys but here uh, for the Xbox platform, it sounds like it might even be potentially full wets are the, uh, the the order of the day when it comes to the race. Anyway, it looks like it's going to be dry though in quality, Chris. Yep, everyone going out to, uh, to expect really the soft S tires to be burnt up. A few people are, are looking at the ultras, interestingly. If it's going to be a wet race, they're not going to start with the hypers, but then. Yeah, if the rain is going to stop at some point, they might want some of the really soft tires towards the end. Yeah, we come into that question mark of what do they go for? Do they go for a full wet setup? If the rain doesn't last very long, they could, that, that could then undo itself. So we don't know. We know that there is rain certainly uh, you know, to be expected, but how long is it going to last? Well, that is uh, something our drivers have to figure out. It's, uh, that, things like that make the commentary box seat much more comfortable, I find. So, yeah. Yeah, at the beginning of the quality session now, we've got a few outlets going on. Most people looking at the hypers, a few people looking at ultrasofts, probably just to save the uh, hypers for their Banzai laps towards the end. But let's see how our drivers do. Yep, we're just coming to the end of the outlaps now. It looks like TRL Button, CRG Simon, these guys are already on their time laps. Still have a few cars in the pits yet to come out, but more than 15 minutes remaining in this single qualifying session. So again, for those that might have missed the races earlier, there's no Q1, Q2, Q3. This is the one and only qualifying session as we see TRL Button missing his apex a little bit for turn one, taking a very late apex for turn two. A car coming out of the pits, but I don't think that got in his way, and he is going to back off out of that one. He, he went very deep into that first corner. It kind of set him off for the next corner, so I think that's why we're seeing him back off in the Toro Rosso. So he'll uh, trundle his way back around. I don't know if he's got enough uh, fuel in his car in order to do another lap attempt. Uh, yeah, as he drops the, uh, the fuel level and errors and stuff like that down. Having a look at CRG Simon. Now, this is one of the guys that I am very familiar with here, Chris, and he is going to be very, very quick. Simon is, from time to time, not all the time, but from time to time, is prone to mistakes, but over one lap raw speed, CRG Simon, there are very few people that are on his level. 
Yeah, when uh, you know, when the day is his, when the uh, stars are aligned or what have you, he's certainly a phenomenal force. First lap on the board, a 109. Expect that to come crashing down where you were seeing uh, mid-106s from Crow yesterday. So uh, very few people getting into the 106s uh, you know, on PS4. I think we have three drivers getting into the 106s over the last two races. So I guess yeah. to show you how quick that particular uh, lap time is or that uh, area of lap time. So a few 109s on the board. That's just people kind of getting out there and getting a few sighted laps done. Expect a few more laps to be done on those, uh, probably on those same sets of tyres. Even Mali that's uh, on the Hyper Softs of 128. Um, well, unless you've done that on a different track, that's certainly not representative from the DRL button. So on board then with CRG Simon on the Hyper Soft tyres as Bastic gets a 108.0 on the board in the Mercedes. Oh, little deep coming into the hairpin. He's already on. Ah, oh, he's, he's not doing that. Oh, no, I was just thinking he hasn't uh, turned his ERS up. He has indeed. He's already running the uh, red fuel light, so he's either in a hurry to get back to the pits, which would be a bit odd because it's 13 and a quarter minutes to go. Does he take the chain? Nope, he was just in a hurry to get back to the pits. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, because he said he, it already had, he had already done one lap, so it must have been invalidated. And, of course, if the driver does uh, have any... Oh, he's, he's come stationary into the pit lane. He's not going to be happy about that. I will say Simon is also, uh, shall we say, an emotional driver for sure. He will he will let you know if, you, if you've done something that he dislikes. As Kowalski now goes quickest, dipping into the 107s, the first of the drivers to dip into the 107s. Uh, a nice mixture of Ultrasoft and Hypersofts going onto the cars. And uh, there are minor differences between the three platforms when it comes to F1. Very, very minor though. Uh, however, the, it does feel different from, pl from platform to platform. Once the drivers get to the uh, the F1 esports proper, you know, once they're signed to a team and racing against the other drivers that are on teams, they're all going to be on the same platform. Everything will be equalized. There will be no differences whatsoever. But you may see minor differences from one platform to another as far as uh, single lap pace, qualifying times, that sort of thing. As the Haas makes his way through the chicane, CRG more so is going to be coming up to the line now. It looks like it's going to be into the 108s. Yeah, 108.0 for more so is good enough for third quickest with uh, Kowalski still holding on to that leading time. Less than two tenths between the top three, though. Yeah, and uh, we saw this again from our PS4 brethren where the, the sight lap from really, really close. Well, the all laps were pretty close. The, I think it was, the, was it 15 cars? Was it the entire field separated by a second? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, the PC guys were a little bit more spread out than that, but hopefully our Xbox One guys will put on a similar performance. I was, uh, when we were on board with, I think it was TRL Button, it looked like he was using a pad as opposed to a wheel, and that's uh, another aspect that, to bear in mind for anyone considering getting into esports. You do not have to have you know, the latest, greatest 300 euro steering wheel at all. You can do it, I mean, if you're brave, you can do it on a keyboard if you really want it. Um, <laughs> Sure, the uh, you yeah, know the expensive technology can help, but it's not the be all or end all. You can perform at very high levels on a pad. Yeah, you know, some drivers will will need the assists to, to kind of help them and start building their building their confidence, building their speed. When you're getting to this stage, you can't run the assists, so you will have to abandon them at some. Stage. As uh, we see snazzy evening come over the line, what does he get on the board? Oh, 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 oh. seven three. Wow. It was in Invalid. Yeah, I thought he took that uh, last chicane a little bit too heavy. 1073. <laughs> uh, that 1073 would have put him six cents ahead of uh, his inverted commas teammate up in pole. But yeah, sadly he took a little bit too much curve on that final chicane. But that's a bit of a uh, bit of an indication of what he's capable of. The other drivers wouldn't have known what time he was capable of at that stage. So uh, yeah, decent effort from uh, Snazzy Evening. I was just saying earlier. Yeah, you, know, you may not have the, the latest equipment and what have you to, you know, you may think you have to have. Not at all. Give it a try. It is open to all. You you never know. You may have lunatics like me and Justin shouting about your on-track antics. Yeah, I, uh, I'll confess. I started, uh, I got into sim racing because I played F1 2012 on a keyboard. Uh, wow. You know, and, and it just started, it was on sale or something like that. You know, I think F1 2013 was already out or about to come out, so I got it at a reduced price. Wow, C CRG Simon getting, uh, avoiding the traffic there. That guy was right on the line. I'm not sure who that was, but that, right on the racing line, that would have not been uh, optimal for Simon. But yeah, I, a, a lot of people start very casually. You know, you start with career mode and then you start to learn the game and the car. 
and and the tracks as well too and then you learn that you start doing quick races you know just just racing online against random uh, other people and if you start enjoying that you might find yourself looking for a league and you join that league and you know you're in a lower end split possibly with assists on that sort of thing and you just slowly work your way up i mean that's pretty much how it is for all of these guys i've never heard of anybody just coming into sim you know buying a very expensive racing wheel coming into it and immediately just being amazing at it nobody nobody's ever done that everybody starts at the bottom works their way up crj simon does go quickest of all by a significant margin ahead of p1r brown actually his mercedes teammate with a 107.276 about a quarter of a second quicker than p1r brown uh so yeah it you know you start with a pad with a with a keyboard whatever with whatever it might be and you slowly work your way up and also um the games are so well engineered that you can be competitive on a pad as well too there have been league champions at the highest of levels uh who were racing on a pad yeah indeed i remember some of the obituaries we had from last year's uh, f1 esports participants saying that some of them had transferred from a pad literally weeks before mm -hmm. the open qualifier started so again don't let anything put you off you might think oh i can never be that fast no one is straight out of the box these guys have put in many 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 yes. hours to yes. get to where they are so if you've got you know if you've got if you feel you've got the ability if you feel you've got the time to practice give it a try yeah okay it might sound like a bit of a salesman speech and in the manner of speaking it is but we're talking from the heart here people we can't do it that's why we talk about it <laughs> so, uh, but we tried we did try oh yeah we yeah uh, but you know the, the fact is that the the platform is there the avenue is there for anyone to give it a try so get you know pick up your pad pick up your wheel pick up your keyboard pick up your mouse if you're that mad you know give it a try you never know where it could lead Yep, and uh, for the likes of these guys, it has led center stage to one of the biggest and most important sim racing uh, tournaments in the entire world, if not the most important. DRS Open for CRL Rosberg. He's another uh, kind of veteran of the Xbox platform who I've been commentating on for a number of years, kind of on, on and off again. He's going to put Peel off into the pits. He's currently 11th quickest, just outside the top 10 with that 108.5. We've only got five drivers so far dipping into the 107s with Simon again quickest by a pretty significant margin and actually other than p1r brown the gap from simon to the next car is over six tenths of a second if you ignore the other mercedes uh as uh more so now shoots up into the top three just four one thousandths of a second quicker than kowalski so more so stamping his name at the top of the timing sheets we've got just over six and a half minutes remaining staying on board with vr bsr infamous he is one of the guys that has gotten into the 107s he's in sector three making his way down towards the final chicane now we'll stick with the force india to find out if this time is going to be an improvement i'm just watching that time as he's coming up to the line it is going to be in the 107s it's a 107.6 so he does find a few tenths of a second, goes third quickest now. Uh, he does have a car there, but I, I assume he's going to be heading back in. Probably doesn't want to be doing another lap on this set of tires, just in case that ends up being his quickest time. Well, indeed, but they're not uh, looking to start on these tires if we are looking at a wet start. So they may True. not kind of consider, uh, yeah, look at every single car is on the hypersoft, if I read that right. So it's interesting that Marley is retired with a 109.2, so he be starting you're pretty much dead last or very near the back so it's not gone very well for him and he retired early from the session maybe he has encountered a technical problem it's a bit of a shame crg simon comes back out he's not uh, complacent with that uh, fairly decent 1072 he's got on the board he feels he's got time out there to find but yeah here presents the conundrum for these drivers how are they going to set their car up as i mentioned they're going to have to take they either if the rain is going to last the whole way out then it, it obviously makes the decision clear for them but it comes into the realm of how much of any of these guys practice on a wet track by and large these guys will practice in dry conditions that's where you get the best times obviously it's easier or easier certainly uh conditions to drive in so they're going to learn how to best adapt their setups but not many people would dedicate a lot of time to wet weather conditions so it's going to be down to who is going to be most confident when uh, when the track gets slippy. Yeah, you're exactly right about that. I mean, the vast majority of races are dry. I mean, there are certain Formula One circuits where it just never rains. Uh, you know, uh, you know the ones, Abu Dhabi, Bahrain, etc. Um, so yeah, the vast majority of practice would have been done in the dry maybe a race or two in the wet or in mixed conditions um of course they would like to find the crossover point that all important time 
where uh, the intermediates start getting slower and slower because the track is getting drier and drier and they're starting to overheat. And you, you want to be able to identify that moment that you're actually going to be able to uh, that you're actually going to be able to go uh, onto the slick tires. Uh, Infamous now getting very very close to P1R Brown. Also getting into the 107s on board with Kyle Mitchell. This is actually his home race. He's a Canadian, another one of the Xbox drivers that I'm familiar with from other series. He was not able to set a time. It was quick enough for a 107.1, but his lap was invalidated, and he's closed right up to the back of Zonta, unfortunately for him. Uh, I assume he is going to be, yeah, he's on uh, zero for deployment, so he is going to be heading back into the pits. There's just under four minutes still to go, so I think he's just about got enough time get back in, fit a new set of boots, head back out there and set a time that is actually representative because at the moment he's one of only two drivers that have yet to set a time. Snazzy Evening in the McLaren is the other one. He's in the pits at the moment, so we can expect him to be coming out pretty soon as CRL Rosberg does set a faster time, but again, invalidated. So he will stick with that 108.566 on the Hypersofts, only good enough for 13th quickest as it stands right now, not even in the top 10. Uh, the times are definitely a little bit slower compared to what we saw on the other platforms, but again, there are minor differences from platform to platform. Yeah, I think Rosberg's probably not on a fast one at this point, so we can probably switch over to somebody else. But yeah, yeah the top guys at the moment, Simon, Brown, Infamous, Morso, Kowalski, uh, those are the top five at the moment. H uh, VBR hit as well into uh, the top guys. Oh, Zonta as well, getting into the 107s, 107.651 for him is gonna move him up into what is currently the second row of the grid, but still got uh, the final laps remaining, still a number of cars in the pits. So I think we're about to see those really quick laps now, Chris. Yeah, we're getting into the Banzai phase as uh, most people will be coming out. Well, I say most people coming out. Uh, P1R Brown, more so Kowalski, Reynolds all now coming back out. And Snazzy Even coming out, out for another one. Oh, Maloney is actually doing another lap. Uh, it's, uh, oh, sorry, finishing this one off, 107.9. Jumps up to seven, 10791, four thousands off that. No, big button, six thousands off the back of Kowalski. It was still four thousands off the back of Morsa. So, yep, here we go. The top guys coming out as well, so no one uh, resting on their laurels. A 1076 from Vastek jumps him up into fourth position. So nice effort there in the Williams. So let's see if he's able to improve on that. He's not, unless he's got enough fuel to do another lap, that's probably going to be, he's not really going to have time to get back, get another yeah. set of boots off. And that didn't look particularly strong for him. Uh, it looked like a slowdown lap uh, thereafter. P1R Brown, we are on board with us. Follow him through his lap and in the Mercedes, the Mercedes front row lockout. We may have seen that once or twice somewhere else. His infamous is uh, up into third with a 107.529. He's just come out. Uh, he's just finishing off his outlaps. A lot of people out there now. Only three cars, four cars, including Manly, not on track. So it's going to be very, very busy in some spots. Here we go again through the first uh, chicane. Now coming down to the next one. Turns eight and nine. This was a particular trouble spot uh, for some drivers. And the Mercedes takes it very, very nicely. Heading down to the hairpin. He needs to get the braking zone right. Doesn't want to wander too wide. Needs to take the apex. Nicely done in the Mercedes. So... Now, DRS open as soon as he can hit it. He stays far over to the right hand side. Initially, just lets the car wander very gently over to the left, taking as little speed out of that car as he can. Now, into the final chicane, needs to cut it as much as he dares, doesn't hit the wall, oh, using every available inch. Straight lines into the line. Can he get onto the top spot? No, oh. an improvement in time, but not position. 15 thousands i think oh no it was making fun it was 10, uh, 102 uh, sorry 107.2 was uh simon simon i thought that was a 107 370 which would be fifteen thousands, not quite so oh and uh, never mind kowalski has just uh, done a 107 one so now we have a mclaren that has uh, jumped up there but expect these times to uh, really start shuffling around yeah infamous in the force india getting into the braking zone for the final chicane now just one more corner keeping out of the barrier very nicely there, not invalidating his lap interestingly not staying to the right hand side of the circuit it is an improvement once again a 107.297 just 19 thousandths of a second off of the time set by crd simon very early in this session worth pointing out uh, also, I was watching CRL Rosberg. He did make it, actually. He was coming out of the pits with that a bit, about a minute 15 remaining 
in this session. I wasn't sure Rosberg was going to get back through and able to start a lap, but he did indeed. So we might see a huge improvement from the Renault driver who currently sits in 13th position, more so now, now getting displaced another position, dropping down into eighth as he makes his way down towards the final chicane. It is very tight in this sort of midfield area. So if he can find even just a, a few tenths of a second here, he can move all, uh, possibly even up to fifth position as he makes a run down to the line. It is going to be in the 107s, but no, it is not an improvement. 17 thousandths of a second slower than his previous time. Let's go on board with Rosberg. I think he might actually be the last one across the line. He's into the turn 10 hairpin now and uh, finding his apex rather nicely, getting onto the throttle as much as he possibly can, feeding the car over to the right-hand side before letting it drift back over to the left-hand side, just using those fingertips to keep it as straight as possible, as Chris was talking about. Not much time remaining. It is still Kowalski. As Simon has crossed the line, he's not going to improve his time, so Kowalski now holds pole position in the McLaren. That's a bit of barrier for CRL Rosberg. I wonder if that's invalidated this time. It's only a 108.137. It did not invalidate the time, but it actually moved him back up to the position where he was in previously into 13th after getting knocked down a little bit so that's unfortunate for Rosberg and I do believe that is everybody's qualifying session completed so that is going to be the order for today's race Kowalski on pole alongside CRG Simon infamous and Brown on row two so just a really exciting qualifying session there it was very very close actually between the top guys and in the end Simon actually didn't improve as we have a little bit of a whoopsie there. <laughs> Simon didn't improve, though, on that time. So that that's very surprising. And that's what I mentioned earlier about him, Chris. He's not the most flawless driver. He is, he is known for uh, making the odd mistake or two, but he is absolutely rapid. The fact that he was within two-tenths of the pole time on what was, what, his first or second attempt, I mean, he, he is quick. And he's going to be looking to jump into the lead at the start of this race. Indeed. So Kowalski and Simon round out the uh, front row. Then Infamous, P1R Brown, Kyle Mitchell jumping up to fifth in the uh, dying moments of the race. Bastek sixth, Zonta seven, hit eight, Morso nine, and uh, Jabalar rounding out the top ten. Snazzy Evening did not set a lap, so he will f start in last position. And he was in the low, very low 107s as well, so he could have been right up towards the front. And that is going to be a potentially dangerous situation for him. If it is uh, as wet as we have been informed, let's see. Oh, that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Get the boats out. My All goodness. Right. Hey, have these things got outboard motors and a rudder? My goodness. They're going to be swimming <laughs> around the circuit. Yeah, this is definitely full wet conditions, which we have not seen that tire compound Ooh. yet so far this week. So this will be the first time we're seeing the full wets. Uh, we don't know how long the rain is going to last for. We don't know if it's going to dry up. It could dry out. It could start drizzling rather than the full-on deluge we're seeing at the moment. And if it's if if that happens, then it could switch over to inters. But you know, it stays stay like that until the end. Um, we don't know exactly what the weather is going to do. We knew that rain was going to be involved. The forecast said very definitively that rain would be falling at some point during this 35 lap race, but it turns out it's right at the start and we just don't know if there's going to be any dry period at all. This might be the conditions until yeah. the end. Wasn't it Canada a few years ago when uh, the, the real life race broadcast was on for like four hours because the yeah. race was delayed? That was Canada yeah. as well. So maybe something to read into that no of course not also it's just dawned on me we've had every single tire compound represented this week we have we full have wet, assuming they're on full wet um the inters on on monday for the ps4 guys and all three soft uh all three dry compounds uh you know in well everywhere else in between uh -huh. so away they go on the parade lap this is going to be this is going to be quite interesting i would imagine that a number of drivers are going to kind of try and feel where there might be grip where they might be able to see uh, <laughs> <laughs> predicted i think we can ignore the predicted pit stop strategy. if anyone dares try that one they are brave <laughs> <laughs> oh we've had a little bit of a problem uh, midfield for a couple of drivers having a bit of a bump that's really gonna hurt because they're not gonna get any heat into their tires at all yep unsurprisingly that's the full wets on uh, everybody as they come around the field so yeah we'll see how well our drivers do we've seen a few people really gun it in the uh in the uh, uh parade lab earlier in the week it doesn't look like uh, anyone's doing that this time just lots of weaving going on i'm really not surprised but of course they do have to be careful as, as what's caught out uh, jabalar and maloney they're probably just kind of taking the weaving a little bit too far and bumped into each other it's, it is really easily done and I, I mean no disrespect whatsoever because it's so easy to do just lock the brakes a little bit too much again unfamiliarity in the rain as i was touching on earlier 
Uh, that's almost certainly what's caused that particular incident between them. So they now work their way past the hairpin onto that back straight. The nerves must be so heightened now. They're probably pretty nervous, you know, feeling the, the tension and the pressure in a dry condition. And now this, oh, I'm glad we're sat here. Yeah, this is really going to mix things up. And just as a reminder for everyone, this is their one shot. There is yeah. This isn't a championship season that takes place over multiple races. This is a one-shot thing. So uh, really, this is actually going to favor the, the types of finesse drivers that really excel in wet weather conditions. So we might see some serious upsets here. I'm really looking forward to this one, though, Chris, as the final drivers are making their way to the grid. This is going to be, I, I, th this potentially might end up being the best race of the week, and that's some high praise. <laughs> and that's not favoritism based either. Bear in mind, you're an Xbox One uh, primarily commentator. I know that's not favoritism based, but here we go. For the final time this week, it is time for the five lights, wind them up, and let them. Oh, that's a long, long haul. That's really going to jangle the nerves. And away we go. Who is going to be bravest on the brakes? Who is going to be able to control the car? Simon with a stunning oh, start. Wow. Off of that second position. Storms ahead of the McLaren. Like it's that still bump there from the, uh, from I think it was Kyle Mitchell on the back of Infamous there. It's uh, third and fourth position. Here they come then, winding their way through the early turns. This is going to be so, so good. The nerves are going to be absolutely on edge. I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing penalties already. Looks like the times are still fairly close. No major incidents just yet. A little bit of a gap from uh, P1R Brown to Kyle Mitchell. So, so for a second world, side by side. And surprisingly, it's BBR Hit and Bastek for seventh position. Still side by side several corners later. Brilliantly done. It's a great move to do in the driving, in the wet. That is bravery. Right behind them, another side by side going on. That is uh, Mossel and Rosberg, I think it was. Now jumping back up to the battle for second position as uh, Simon's got himself about eight tenths of a gap already. As uh, Infamous then doing what he can to pressure Kowalski whilst fending off Carl Mitchell. Does look like though everybody has made it uh, through the first uh, three quarters of the lap. So far, so good. Yeah, I'm not seeing any uh, carbon fiber flying off on the circuit or, or any giant gaps starting to form. Everybody's within about 1.2 seconds of the car ahead of them. Uh, Kyle Mitchell, though, making up ground at the start of that race, moving himself up into fourth position ahead of P1R Brown. As well, CRL Rosberg gaining positions at the start of the race, going from 13th to 10th. So he's now in that all-important 10th place position. Again, it is the top 10 that will be moving on to the pro draft with a chance to be selected by one of the real-life F1 teams to represent them in the 2019 F1 eSports season. BBR hit now making the overtake on TNT Zonta, actually. He drops down in the seventh position. The Sauber driver is not going to be happy about that, but hit is definitely gaining positions. Uh, hopefully we can get the positions game graphic up and see just who the uh, the winners and losers in that start have been. But yeah, I have to say, I'm really, really impressed, Chris. As you touched on, no major incidents at the start of this race. We're already one lap done out of the 35 we've got ahead of us here in Canada. And look at the conditions. Look at the view. As we go on board with Zonta, he lost that position to VBR Hit. And it looks like Hit already starting to build up a bit of a gap as they make their way through the 8-9 chicane. You can hear him feathering the throttle as he get on, gets onto the throttle coming out of that turn 9 chicane. Not quite as fast through that chicane in these sorts of conditions, of course, missing the apex. But it's not such a bad thing in these sorts of conditions. But VBR Hit now on the hunt with P1R Brown. He wants that fifth place position. He's been making... Uh, making up positions in this race. Yeah, two positions gained already. Rosberg's up into ninth. That's something that we missed already. Reynolds, Leclerc, Tom, and Snazzy Evening all gaining positions in this race. Jabberlar seems losing out the most down into 18th position, possibly uh, pulling off into the pits. And there is confirmation that our leader, CRG Simon, uh, with the fastest lap of the race so far, he's already built an over two second gap here, Chris. Yeah, and the uh, penalty scoreboard has been opened. I didn't think it would be long before uh, that one came into play. And again, I mean no disrespect by that. I'm just saying it's that easy to do. It's easy enough to do in the dry. But when you're f trying to find any kind of grip whatsoever, and you know, it's that much uh, easier to do, especially when the field is this condensed. As Kyle Mitchell, oh, he was, he's really pining the pressure onto Infamous. Oh, hitting P1 our brown swap position at that very same place. That uh, turn six, seven chicane, nice move there. From VBR here to take that spot, he did really looks like he's got the pace over the Mercedes, and he hopefully will be able to open up a gap there. As we are seeing Kyle Mitchell chasing Infamous, and not far down the road is actually Kowalski. 2.3 seconds now is uh, CRG Simon's lead, and there it is. 
Uh, as you can see, the Mercedes sprinting off into the distance. Kowalski's got a lot of work to do to try and keep that Force India behind him. <laughs> Big train forming behind the uh, Toro Rosso, not because of the Toro Rosso of VBR hit. As a snazzy evening as snap the snazzy evening has gained another position. There he is in the McLaren. He's gone past Tom uh, for that 14th spot. Bear in mind that snazzy evening started in last position due to uh, not being able to set a qualifying time. VBR hit getting his penalty on the board along with Reynolds as well. I, I suspect we're going to see a lot of those. So we saw a fair few of them earlier in the week, but I think we're going to see quite a collection forming in this evening's race but snazzy evening doing a cracking job making his way through the field so uh, he's got some pace to do but as long as he can control it and uh, keep just plugging away getting the positions when he can he could well we've seen we've seen stranger things happen he could still get into that crucial top 10. bear in mind it's the top 10 that these drivers are aiming for it's those drivers that automatically qualify to go through into the pro draft so where, where you are within the top 10, I think that's going to be penalty decided. So again, getting into the top 10 is not likely to be enough. If, you, if you're carrying a few penalties, you need to kind of overcome that as well. So uh, that's going to be the target for, for all of our drivers to you know, try and keep it clean, but they need to keep the pace up as best they can, which yeah, is so difficult to do in these conditions. Yeah, Kyle Mitchell, I think actually grazing the barrier at the entrance to turn eight there, that really put him offline for the 8-9 chicane. So uh, I think... He maybe lost a little bit of time in all of that. We're on board with Leclerc as he makes his way past Maloney 88 at that uh, at that turn 10 hairpin. Uh, no DRS, obviously, in these conditions. That would be absolutely terrifying, but uh, he's now up into 12th position. Four positions gained, uh, similar to Rosberg and Snazzy Evening. All three of those guys actually gaining four positions at the start of this race. Four seconds now is the gap from Simon down to Kowalski. So an absolutely dominant lead. And that's, that is what I was worried about, actually, because I, I, I was talking about Simon and his sort of driving persona and all that. And now that he's out in the lead by more than three seconds, he could even pick up a three-second time penalty at this point, and he would still be winning the race. And at, at this point, I have to say, advantage Simon, because this is just, this he's now in his element. You know, putting in quick laps after quick laps, that's what Simon does. I mean, the, the man is an absolute machine. So he's going to be pumping in these laps. I don't think he's going to be worrying too much. Of, I don't think he's managing the gap. Let me put it that way. He is extending the gap by as much as he possibly can. He is a veteran sim racer. He knows that penalties might come. And at, just to touch on what you mentioned, Chris, yeah, getting penalties in Canada is extremely easy when you can see the, the track. You can barely even see the road in these conditions. Oh, very wide there for somebody coming out of the hairpin. I'm not sure who that was, but they're going to be losing a lot of time and possibly coming under threat even without the use of DRS down this main straight down towards the final corner. So uh, we're sticking with Maloney88. He did recently lose that position to Leclerc. Simon continues to pump in the fast lap to 121.1 in these full wet conditions. 4.6 seconds. Now another six tenths, seven tenths of a second found by CRG Simon. This is absolutely rapid from the Mercedes driver. He's going to have a full pit stop to himself if he carries on at that kind of rate. Incredible. We saw, we, saw, we saw this on Monday as well. Look how close almost half the field is. <laughs> yeah. From P1R Brown is sixth. Right the way down, you've got to go down to 16th before you have a gap that's bigger than 1.3 seconds between each car. And that's not really that much of a gap in these conditions. Now, we're on board at the moment with Kyle Mitchell. You've seen the amount of spray coming off of Infamous's car, and that's from a heightened, uh, an elevated camera position. From the driver mm -hmm. position, it's worse, because they're right down in the middle of the spray. So they get absolutely no relief from yeah, the, the kind of relentless amount of spray that they're getting. But Kyle Mitchell doing a yeah, pretty good job hanging onto the back of the Force India. Obviously, it's still called Force India, because it's still there from 2018, obviously as uh, they continue their battle now, looking at TSR Bastek, who is right with Zonta. I think it was uh, Zonta's car that was wandering wide at the hairpin last time around. He continues to chase P1R Brown. CRL Rosberg has got uh, more so Reynolds and Leclerc for company, not too far behind this snazzy evening. And uh, VBR Hit is in the pits along with P1R Brown. So, and it's, oh, and Rosberg as well. So a number of people coming into the pits. I wonder if they're considering it. Oh. There's a lot of them. There's five people, six people in the That's got to be a tire change. They've got to be. Yeah. I can't believe they burnt the. Uh, they can't have burnt out no. the, the full wets that quickly. They've got to be going on to winter, surely. 
You would yeah. never have, well, unless you, unless there's been a huge pileup that no one's seen. <laughs> that would be, that would be quite an amazing. Yeah, so I reckon a lot of people are thinking about Intis, and if they've timed that right, they are going to be very, very rapid. And again, if they're going for full width of Inters, we may well see the dries come out before the end of the race, and that's going to be a really interesting time. Full width to Inters is not out. Uh, there you go. That's the Inters mm -hmm. is indeed coming out. So going from full width to Inters is much less of a risk going, than it is going from Inters to dries. Oh, as uh, Zonta has got that uh, particular chicane wrong. So. It's less of a risk to make the time change that these guys have done now. It's where, if, if the track dries up, that's going to be the biggest test of uh, of the real sh yeah, showing of our drivers. And also how late into the race it is. There's only a few laps left they need to kind of just run the inters until they blow up. But, you know, if there's a decent amount of laps, um, decent amount of laps left, yeah, some people are going to chance going on to the drives. Uh, at that stage, top four now coming in. I would imagine all the rest of the uh, full wet runners are going to come in pretty quickly. Oh, yep, six, seven. Yeah, there's only going to be, what, three or four full wet runners left. Oh, that Ooh. is Marley going on the inside, or trying to go on the inside of uh, Jabalana. Now, these guys have had their own incidents. I think Marley may well have uh, tried to change it. And there you go. Proof, proof that that was the right time to do it. VBR hit has uh, claimed the fastest lap. As uh, Kowalski is it? Well, so many people are actually in the pits. Only two runners. EVR Reynolds choosing to continue on the full wet. Oh, interesting decision. Oh, there's another one. That will be Button, I think. Yeah, Button's been in the pits already, so that's really hurt him. I think he had a front wing change, uh, judging by how long he was in the pits for. So, uh, yeah, he's had to go on to the Inters now. Here's Kyle Mitchell in this big train behind Kowalski in third position. So all of these guys have been through, pretty much come out. There's been a little bit of change because VBR here was the a first one of these guys to pit so he's jumped the force india of infamous in doing so is now on kowalski's case so uh, he's doing a pretty good job and simon i did call he would have a pit stop to himself he's come back out in the lead <laughs> yeah he has indeed it is not quite the lead that he had before but again reynolds is yet to pit so if you uh, add the gap between reynolds and kowalski that's the real gap between uh, first and second, and Simon is looking better and better, to be totally honest. I was watching VBR hit as he was closing up to the back of, uh, oh gosh, I've already forgotten who it was, but there was somebody ahead of him on the full wets, and he was the leading intermediate runner, and he was catching them at quite a rate of knots. CRG Simon continues setting uh, fastest laps, though it's about half a second quicker than the lap that we saw from him last time. It was a 121.1, now he's down to a 120.6, so we are right at that crossover point, clearly. As uh, it looks like Zonta, no, uh, Reynolds did come into the pits finally at the end of lap eight to fit a set of intermediates. Q1R Brown now setting the fastest lap, going about a tenth of a second quicker than Simon. He is right down the order now into 12th position, though, for P1R Brown. Really not a great start for him. We're on board, though, with Kyle Mitchell. He's still looking to make a move on VSR Infamous. Again, this is the home circuit of Kyle Mitchell. I, I, I'm not aware if any of the other drivers are Canadian, but I do know very well that Kyle Mitchell is. So he's going to be looking in particular for a good result here on the rundown towards turn eight. Anything doing there? No, the Red Bull stays behind the Force India for the meantime. It looks like he's gotten an excellent run, though, out of that high speed chicane. Will he be able to mount an attack into the turn 10 hairpin? The Force India does not go defensive into the hairpin. The Red Bull a little bit later on the brakes sneaks up the inside. The Force India gives him the room. Infamous with a little bit better exit, though, does move back ahead. However, Kyle Mitchell with the slipstream effect coming off of that Force India, he's definitely going to pull alongside. He's going to get the inside line as well into the final chicane is he going to have enough straight line speed to actually move ahead and take the racing line yes he does even before they get into the braking zone he's ahead as simon now puts in a 118.7 it's now eight seconds between simon and kowalski he is absolutely gone wow simon is putting on a performance of champions at the moment in these very very trying conditions absolutely stunning stuff for him so he's giving himself as big a buffer as he can we are still looking at uh, Carl Mitchell as he now chases a VBR hit as yeah, Kowalski having inherited that second position from when Rosberg pitted. Rosberg's still within the top 10. Such a close pack from 6th down to about, you know, 6th down to 14th. Well, 15th really, so that, that pack's still very heavily condensed. There's a lot of battling going on there and still a decent scrap going on here with Carl Mitchell in the Red Bull. Now that he's cleared the Force India, with that you know, very clean, uh, you, you could almost assume that uh, he had DRS open down that back straight. He did that really well and managed to get back to the racing line before he got to the braking zone. So brilliantly done 
from the Red Bull. Now trying to uh, close down the Toro Rosso, who's still running on the pressure onto Kowalski for that second position. Plenty of uh, racing going on, but it's going to be very, very, uh, very unsettling, particularly for those that are right by the top 10, because there's a lot of penalties that will need to be applied. We've seen a lot of penalties already applied, and we're not even a quarter, we're barely a quarter away through the race. So, yeah, th th a lot of these positions are going to be penalty driven. Uh, so everyone has got is basically going to be just kind of pushing as hard as they can to get you know, as better position as they can. So when the penalties do fall, they're in the best best position they can possibly be. Yeah, without a question. Yeah, and, and of course they are going to be getting information from their virtual race engineers about the cars and behind the cars ahead and behind, letting them know about penalties and all that kind of stuff. So uh, the drivers will be well informed when it call, when it comes to all that that sort of thing. Reynolds now picking up a three second time penalty. I'm not sure if that's his his first or not. A Jabberlar as well picking up another penalty down at the back in 18th position. And yeah, as you mentioned, Chris, very very tight. Uh, in the midfield, all the way right down to uh, 15th position. Tom, uh, just about within two seconds of Snazzy Evening, who is uh, trying to, to make a move on Maloney. Actually, it looks like that's a, just about to happen. It is it, indeed Snazzy Evening moving up into 13th position. But we are still focusing on these battles for second and really third position. Kyle Mitchell starting to reduce that gap. He's extended the gap down to BSR Infamous in the Force India. But Kyle Mitchell closing up to the back of the Toro Rosso of BBR hit. As uh, Hit now makes the move on, on Kowalski, moves up into second position, but already it's now a 10 second gap. It's already two seconds higher. Zonta now in sixth position, picking up a three second time penalty. That's very unfortunate. Uh, that's going to lose him a position or two, actually. That could even indeed drop him behind Rosberg. We're not even halfway through this race, though. We still have tons of racing still to go. We don't know if we're going to see the dry tires. We, see, we do see Leclerc, though, struggling at the exit of turn one, entrance of turn two. And uh, EVR Reynolds possibly thinking about making an attack on him. He is uh, right in that all-important 10th place position. So if he could, he would really like to put a car or two between himself and the guys behind just to make himself at, at least feel that little bit more safe from the cars behind because it, again it's really not that big of a gap it's two seconds down to more so and then he's got p1r brown who qualified in the top five so i mean reynolds really needs to try and move forward if he wants to prevent himself from moving backwards yeah absolutely and also an another particular mention leclerc is up seven positions from his start everyone's been through the pits at least once he's had a cracking start so here he might make it eight five. here too oh well there he goes uh, trying to force his way through on the inside. Sierra Rosberg wants to get a decent drive from the, the hairpin to hold him up, and he does exactly that. But also, Snazzy Evening, starting from the back, made his way really close to the top then, then going through the pit, and he's still five places up from his uh, original starts. Infamous now gets onto the penalty board as well. Oh, wow. You saw <laughs> Rosberg defending that inside line. That's going to compromise his exit from that final chicane. Is Leclerc then going to try and move on the inside of turn one to say barrel up to the braking zone and no he doesn't make the move so he's now he's going to try and oh and he's giving himself a penalty now so again that just adds the pressure to these drivers they're already in a very very difficult position and you know the penalties that are going on is it's impossible to to kind of keep up with them all so uh, he won't know where he kind of sits until the check of flag falls none of us do as i have been writing them down um <laughs> i don't think i could have actually kept up with them because <laughs> So, yeah, working their way then through turn six and seven as uh, EVR Reynolds acting as a great camera car for us. Uh, <laughs> he is 1.6 clear of Morto, so he hasn't got any immediate uh, pressure behind us. Marley getting on the penalty board again. And Leclerc is piling the pressure onto Rosberg as they now stream on down towards the hairpin, but Rosberg getting the drive he needs at the time he needs it. And there's another aspect. You may well be under a lot of pressure. You may feel the car behind you is quicker but it's defending at the right time. You don't want to be defending fresh air, but equally, you don't want to be compromising your run through the next corner that could well set up the next defensive move. Because uh, both of these cars have had a decent run from the hairpin. Leclerc again looking at the inside flash of came, but no, still can't commit to it. Brilliant defensive driving from Rosberg and great offensive pressure from Leclerc. Yeah, and, I mean, it was incredible just watching Rosberg make that overtake side by side into the final chicane in any conditions is incredible. In these conditions, it's unbelievable. So uh, to move up into eighth position for Rosberg, that was truly incredible. Leclerc, though, is not not giving up. I mean, he is fighting back 
as best as he possibly can and doing a fantastic job, I think, of keeping up to the back of that Renault. In fact, uh, pushing very hard, pushing right up to the, up against that wall. We have a replay here, and this was uh, infamous on lap 11, making his way down uh, the, the main straight, down towards the final chicane. And uh, that's uh, down into the final chicane there. Yep, and you can see... Uh, the McLaren of Kowalski, Kowalski yeah, l losing that position to BBR hit, moves, who moved up into second position. A lovely overtake there. Again, I don't know if those guys are actually going to be able to apply any sort of pressure on Simon. I will mention, though, that the gap has actually stabilized between the two of them. Oh, is Leclerc now really needs to worry about EBR Reynolds. Uh, he's going to be getting lots of slipstream here. The only uh, benefit for Leclerc and that Williams is that he'll be getting a bit of slipstream off of CRL Rosberg ahead of him as well, too. But I do believe that Reynolds is closer to the back of the Williams than the Williams is to the back of that Renault. You can still see the rain is falling ever so slightly. It's just a bit of a drizzle now that we're seeing as we rapidly approach the halfway distance point of this 50% distance race on the run across the start finish line. Is it going to be close enough? No, Leclerc stays behind. Oh, Whoa. but misses his breaking point. That's going to be a, an open invitation to uh, Reynolds to make the move. You can hear the crowd going wild as the, re as the <laughs> Red Bull sneaks past the Williams after that very important mistake. That's really got to hurt. You can hear the tires squealing right on the edge of adhesion as they break for turn three. So yeah, Leclerc down a couple of positions. Rosberg up to eighth. Reynolds up to ninth, Leclerc down to 10th. Yeah, that's a bit of a shame. Is uh, That one mistake just undid all his hard work. He was piling the pressure on so well onto the Renault. And now EBR Reynolds stands in between himself and his quarry, but we'll see what he can do to recover from that. He may well have burned the best out of those tires with how hard he's been pushing. And then right at the back of that shot, you just saw Morso snap the evening in P1R Brown. So that's a battle for 11th. There's been rumbling on, and Stanley Evening made up another position whilst all this lot was going in. Yet another fast as that from uh, CRG Simon. Oh, Leclerc! I Ooh. think by the end, how much he's struggling. Bearing in mind, as you pointed out earlier, Justin, the rain seems to be easing off, and there does look like this breaks in the clouds, so we might see some dry weather conditions later on. We almost, I would imagine, we'll see the rain stop before the end of the race. Ah, so just how coffee race the track is drying, so. We are likely to see some dry weather tires. Ah, so there is a little bit of rain that our drivers are contending with, but the track is drying out quickly. This will be why Leclerc is struggling so badly. He's, he has, if it was still very wet, those tires would be fine, but they're burning out. Oh, and there again, he's not got the adhesion that he's been used to. And he just brushes off the wall on the exit of that turn four so he's really really struggling big lock up again there's not much left on those inter tires we're going to start seeing people coming into the pits but it's going to be a bit early especially you know, we've had reports that there's rain still in the third sector so that is from the hairpin right the way down to the start finish line there goes oh Jabalar's already gone onto the super soft well, he's well. Got to lose. yeah he's gonna yeah he's already last if the if most of the track is dry he can really gain some time and just tiptoe around that third sector but that third sector includes this straight whoa EVR Reynolds massive snap of oversteer nearly threw him into the wall has ruined his momentum out of that hairpin and here comes Leclerc to try and claim that position back the Red Bull not willing to let that go and a huge lockup again from Leclerc Rosberg is coming to the pits and yeah I kind of saw that coming and he was a little bit forced out there but he did have a huge lockup of his own accord P1 Abraham has another penalty under the board so lots of people feeling that now's the time to go on to the dry tyres but they may be facing the, well, I would imagine all of them are facing the same problem that Leclerc is but there's nothing left on the tyres as soon as the track gets dry or even vaguely dry these inches just completely overheat and burn out so they might have to be forced onto the super soft tires at this stage probably earlier than they would like yeah the the, uh, the super soft tires should make it to the end of this race though uh coming in lap 15 16 thereabouts where where we are seeing uh jabberlar does not appear to be gaining time though i'm trying to watch rosberg's delta to tom one two three up ahead of him yeah he is losing time ever so slightly so it may not quite be yet and that's a big chunk of time actually that Rosberg just lost so uh, it's it's difficult to uh, to judge this sort of thing uh, a few of the drivers getting it very right when it came to the intermediate switchovers but I think the guys that have gone on to Supersofts here have done it a little bit too early again they should be able to make it to the end here we go uh, Simon is into the pits Mitchell Kyle Mitchell is into the pits BSR Infamous is into the pits as well too so now we're starting to see the heavy hitters the big guns make their way onto the soft uh, uh, the super soft compound tire the slicks 
the dry weather tires and uh, Infamous does come out and he is also onto a set of super softs and it looks like Jabberlar has unfortunately come to the end of his race but DRS is enabled so 17 cars still remain about 17 laps still to go and we've got DRS active now as well Chris yep that's always a giveaway that race control think it's dry that the Sometimes that is a little misleading. Sometimes there's more wet weather the, out there than the drivers particularly like. But vast majority of drivers now onto the uh, super soft tyres. It's the only way really to go. It's the only tyre that's going to last till the end. But they have to be very, very careful. There's more uh, water out there than these tyres are going to be able to deal with because there's no grooves in them, hence the name slicks. So this may sound like an obvious statement, but bear in mind that these guys have been used to driving on groove tyres, on those wet weather tyres, either full wets or inters for the last 18 laps or 17 and a half laps so they now have to kind of remind themselves okay you know i need to you know i can now go a bit quicker but as soon as they start to kind of get into the re routine of the uh of the super soft tires of the dry tires they'll catch a bit of water that's still out there that hasn't quite dried up and could well throw them into the wall so you've got to be very alert as the last of the water clears as the last drivers that are coming off of their wet weather tires yeah, you have to be alert around a wet Canada, that is for sure, as we stay on board with CRG Simon. He gets a bit of oversteer as all of the, the rest of the guys are into the pit. So VBR hit and also Kowalski. Kowalski actually had Simon closing up to the back of him. Let's focus though on P1R Brown as he tries to send one up the inside into the final chicane on Leclerc. But no, can't quite make that work. Got a better exit though, it seems, out of that chicane and is going to be side by side with the inside line down towards turn one. I believe if the Mercedes can be later on the brakes, just about takes it inside line now for turn two for P1R Brown. But Leclerc trying to stick it around the outside. Tom123 is right there with them as well too, looking to pick up any pieces if these two should collide. P1R Brown do does stay ahead of Leclerc, but uh, we've seen before that Leclerc does not give up on uh, on anything. Yep, trying up the inside into turn six, but that's actually going to lose him a position. Tom, one, two, three, around the outside, a bit of bumping between the two of them. Closing the door firmly is Leclerc. Tom, one, two, three, has to stay behind in 14th position. Maloney as well, not far behind, could get involved in this battle as well, too, and that's given a big gap to P1R Brown, who is in 12th position, about three and a half seconds adrift of snazzy evening who again started stone dead last, now inside the top 10, Chris. Yeah, what a great recovery drive for the McLaren. It's, yeah, that, um, all that fighting that uh, Leclerc was doing and then suddenly was sprung upon by the Force India cost him a huge amount of time on P1R Brown. They were side by side by this point in the lap uh, last time around and then suddenly Leclerc found himself 1.3 behind when the Force India appeared. I think Tom actually bounced off the wall because he lost a good three seconds as he now, yeah, and now he's in the pit. So unfortunately he did not come away unscathed from that particular altercation as Reynolds adds another penalty onto the ball with now seeing the fastest lap change hands almost on a lap by lap basis, unsurprisingly. Carl Mitchell back in a battle then with VBR hit this time for the second podium spot. So he's had a, a pretty good run towards the sharp end of the field as Tiara Button now gets uh, his turn on the fastest lap on it. Some, there are a couple of drivers on ultra soft tyres. Oh, oh, okay. That's um, an interesting call, but oh well, a, a bit of a lighter car. It might stretch. I think 15 laps a little optimistic, but yeah, the car, it, it will be. They'll have to kind of be careful towards the tail end, but the car is much lighter at this stage. Uh, so we'll see. It hasn't really had a chance of rubber in a great deal, but yeah, they know what they're doing. Um, I guess I've got nothing to lose in the, in the position they're in, so may as well give it a try. So uh, CRG Simon, uh, well, he, oh. adds, he finally adds his name to the penalty board, even if he does, he, need, he would need to, you know, over nine seconds of penalty before he would have to start worrying about anything. So <laughs> he's got uh, nothing particularly to worry about. Snazzy evening with a new fastest lap. We're now seeing 112s. The lap, best lap was 118 on the Inters. So it goes to show how much this race has completely changed. As, uh, as it has proceeded. And also now, those that have gone for a dry setup, they are going to be very, very much back into play. You know, fresh tires, decent setup for the condition they now face, but you know, we will see. We will see, so much can still happen. Yep, Snazzy so Evening. Oh, like I, was gonna say, doing a, <laughs> I was gonna say doing a fantastic job, but then finds the barrier at the exit of turn seven and uh, that's probably not what you want but uh, uh, thankfully he was able to get away with that one but again I, I have to say what an incredible drive from snazzy evening to find himself now battling for eighth position after starting in 18th position 
That is 10 positions gained if he can make his way past Rosberg and Reynolds. And uh, he does have one lap fresh retires compared to Rosberg. Same age as Reynolds as VBR hit now into the 111.2s. So very, very quick. And Kowalski with a 110. Point seven. That's an extremely quick time from Kowalski, who now finds himself in fifth position, trying his hardest to get within DRS range of Infamous, who I know for a fact has a penalty. He's one of the names that I do remember seeing uh, when they were uh, coming up on the screen with the penalties. Uh, but yeah, it's continuing to focus on uh, P1R Brown now on Morso. So this is just outside the top 10. P1R Brown would really like to get past Morso here. He's definitely been closing up on him. Leclerc and Maloney really dropping off the back of P1R Brown. So it seems that the Mercedes man is on the move and uh, looking to gain one more position off of Morso here. Uh, I'm very familiar with both of these drivers, actually, and I know they're very similar, actually. I'd say P1R Brown, a bit more of a uh, high and low kind of driver, whereas Morso, more of like a consistent kind of driver. So it's, uh, uh, Morso is gonna be defending his absolute hardest out there to try and keep P1R Brown behind. But if Brown is on it like he sometimes can be, he's going to have a very hard time. He's, they're practically nose to tail as they make their way out of the turn 10 hairpin, moving a bit further up the field, however. Snazzy evening with the DRS. EVR Reynolds with the DRS and the slipstream off of Rosberg as well, too. Inside line, though, for the McLaren. A bit later on the brakes, nearly making contact with the back of the Renault under the braking. He does make the move on EVR Reynolds, though, and is up into ninth position. I mean... Again, I got to say, Snazzy Evening might be driver of the day. Simon, certainly, contender for driver of the day. You guys can let us know with the hashtag F1 Esports on Twitter about who your favorite driver is so far in this race. But this is an unbelievable drive we're seeing from Snazzy Evening as we get a replay now. We'll have a look back at, at lap 23. This is uh, what we cut away from, actually, as P1R Brown picked up the DRS off of CRG Morso on the run. He gets the inside line into the scan. He's, he's quite a bit later on the brakes compared to Morso, and he does take that position up into P11 and only a couple seconds adrift of that all-important 10th place for us. Yep, and that's, of course, before penalties are taken into consideration, so that could well completely change routes. Reynolds seems to be in trouble. He's lost a lot of positions. He's not in the pits. I wonder if EVR Reynolds has had a spin or some kind of incident. He's now right the way down there in 14. Yeah. Bearing in mind, he was in this battle that we are looking at. Yeah, he lost two positions on this back straight, challenging Ross. Wait, you got passed by Rosberg, and then Snazzy Evening with an absolute storming effort, as he's just done on Rosberg. That's when he left him for dead on that uh, back straight. Of course, DRS enabled. But even Snazzy Evening, he must have clenched something chronic side by side into that game last time around. That was marginal. It was clean, but my goodness, it was close. So uh, that was one of those moments that. Uh, yeah, he'll, um, he'll look well, that one uh, came to be fairly clean, but uh, something has definitely gone wrong for EVR Reynolds now, dropping all the way down there to 14th. But, you know, we've seen earlier in the, in the week how just gritty determination and, and lack of giving up can still pay dividends. So, the, you know, the, the, the race is not done until the checker flag falls. Oh, that's infamous going very deep. Big lock up into that hairpin. But Kowalski just could not get the traction when he needs it. But that is going to really keep him in contention for the DRS. Open on the McLaren now. And the Force Indy goes back to the racing line. I think he, uh, I think infamous admitted defeat on that one. You know when a move is done. And through into fourth for Kowalski at the moment. Carl Mitchell still keeping VBR here for company up there in uh, for the battle for second position. There it is. The Red Bull still chasing the Toro Rosso. They have been battling for a long, long time now. He has snazzy even. He's now got a bit of a gap to close out. Six seconds before he finds Bastek. But uh, Bastek certainly has been on the penalty board more than once. So that may still change around quite, quite dramatically. Zonka, too. Yeah, pretty much everyone in the field has been on the uh, penalty board at least once. So, I mean, wow. Look how close the field is, considering you know, we've had three different tyre compounds, two of them wet, and uh, still we have some amazing battles going on. Yeah, I incredible stuff. Oh, Snazzy Evening now picking up a three-second time penalty as well, although almost with, uh, with an over two-second gap already down to CRL Rosberg and knocking out a huge chunk of time to Bastek ahead as well. It was about 6.3 seconds not that long ago between Bastek and Snazzy Evening. I was going to point out he needs to be about half a second a lap quicker compared to Bastek in order to close in uh, Kyle Mitchell with the three-second time penalty. That's unfortunate for uh, for the Canadian in third position who's trying to get past the Toro Rosso. It's very, very marginal between the two of them. Uh, we haven't seen Kyle 
diving up anything uh, just yet, but we're going to check to see if BBR Hit has picked up any sort of penalties or anything like that just yet. It is now almost 13 seconds between Simon and Hit. Simon is absolutely dominating this race with about 10 laps, a little less than 10 laps still to go here in Canada. We're well, well past the halfway point. We don't expect any of the cars to come back into the pits. They all should be able to make it relatively comfortably to the end of this race. Uh, and BBR Hit does have a three-second time penalty as well, too. So uh, these guys are level on penalties as Rosberg now becomes the next to pick up a three-second time penalty. I'm not sure what more so's penalty situation is like, but that could change who is going to the pro draft, potentially. So it's unfortunate for Rosberg. But here we go with Kyle Mitchell. He's got the... Oh, my gosh. He's flown <laughs> by at about the halfway point of the straight. There's already a couple of car lengths between the two of them as they get into the breaking zone of that final game. And the Canadian takes second position. And uh, we've got some more uh, uh, three-second time penalties as well, too. But the main talking point here, definitely Kyle Mitchell up into second point place again at his home race as well, too. This is a fantastic performance from him. He left VBR hit for absolute dead. He had a brilliant drive off of that, off of that uh, final turn. An absolutely excellent effort for him. So, who can, who can we talk about? Now we finally get an opportunity to have a breather. Is there any amount of uh, action we've had? So Kyle Mitchell then looking to try and extend that gap between himself and VBR hit. The Toro Russell doing a good job hanging on to the back of the Red Bull. I do think he's going to struggle. Even though Kyle Mitchell's tyres are a lap older, it does look like the Red Bull has had the pace over the Toro Russell. But he's going to be here where it really counts. Can the Red Bull get a decent drive from that uh, final turn? He does. Should, uh, should just about be enough. Uh, VBR here will, of course, get DRS. I'll bring him back in. I don't think he's going to be close enough to make a move unless it's the biggest dive bomb in the world. No, he knows better than that. So Carl Mitchell doing exactly what he needs. Oh, a big moment there for VBR here. It's going to cost him a colossal amount of time. He slammed on the brakes. And there he goes. Now two seconds between the two. So that's a defy that pretty much brings that battle to an end. So Rosberg wants to get past P1R Brown. Mosso does not have a penalty on the board. Rosberg does. And he hasn't yet, well, he's on the cusp of being able to overcome that pen, that uh, penalty gap, although now the timing is saying that he is over that three-second gap. But, you know, we know how easy it is to pick up the penalty. If Rosbo picks up another one, that will drop him out of that crucial top ten. But, of course, people ahead of him have penalties, so that made, um, that point may become moot anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. We will see when the uh, checkered flag falls. I'm still keeping an eye on a snazzy evening's gap from uh, between himself and Bastec. That was six seconds when he got that position, I think about three laps ago. Now 3.4 seconds separates himself and seventh position of TSR Bastec. So he is not relenting at all. Great effort from him. Talking about driver of the day, it, it would be, for me, it's a difficult call between Simon and snazzy evening, both doing a stunning job out front. I think it would uh, go to snazzy evening just because of how much he's had to fight to get through the field and with the pit stops involved. Yeah, I got to say Kyle Mitchell and VBR hit as well, too. Those guys are definitely contenders for driver of the day. Really, really enjoying the performances they're putting on. Uh, but Snazzy Evening is doing what he needs to do to close up to the back of Bastek. I, I said it before, I'll say it again. He needs about half a second per lap. He's been doing that, actually, as we come to the end of lap 28. So it's seven laps. So uh, half a second a lap would be about 3.5. It's actually 3.1 now. So Snazzy Evening is actually gaining at more than uh, half a second per lap to the back of Bastek. Now, catching someone and overtaking someone are two very different things, as uh, racing fans are very familiar with. So uh, it, that is not done and dusted by any stretch of the imagination. But the way Snazzy Evening has been driving in this race, I have to imagine he he is probably going to be uh, taking that position. So uh, Rosberg and Morso are still very close uh, to that three second time. Rosberg with that penalty, Morso without a penalty. So it's very marginal between the two of them. Rosberg outside the DRS range on oh. Keenan R. Brown. Oh, and there it is. That is six seconds worth of penalties for Rosberg. And that is enough at the moment to drop him outside the top 10. Again, we don't know all the penalties that are in the top 10 and stuff like that, that could end up changing things even more. But we do know one thing, that's six seconds for Rosberg, and that's not ideal. No, and that's uh, Carusha's going to drop him outside of the top. Well, it certainly would drop him behind more so. So exactly. he's going to have to bank on other people's penalties, uh, playing a part of that. Here is Kowalski on the back of VBR hits. So that's that 4.7 seconds that Carl Mitchell's opened up between himself and the Toro Rosso as well. That's a wow. stunning gap that he's opened up. 
as Armani puts another one on the penalty board. So now the McLaren is looking to demote VBI hit off of the podium. And he's been in that podium position for vast majority of the race. Now Kowalski starting to come uh, really good again in the closing stages of this race, really hounding the Toro Rosso. It does look like. And this could be a, a setup difference. I mentioned it before. Some people going for a, you know, possibly a more wet setup that will give them a bit of a higher downforce, but will compromise their top speed, which is you know, particularly crucial, particularly here. But, you know, Kowalski may have gone for, you know, opted for the dry setter, which is really going to pay dividends for him right now. And again, blast past the Toro Rosso. Absolutely nothing VBR hit could have done about that. The pace difference just way too big in the McLaren for him to be able to defend that. Look at that, that's half a second in one corner that uh, Kowalski's given himself. So uh, I think VBR hit is now really starting to struggle. Yeah, I think Hit has really high downforce, because if you remember, uh, if you cast your mind back a, a little while ago, Kyle Mitchell made a similar sort of definitive overtake on VBR Hit. So um, either he's got some front wing damage potentially, which is really slowing him down in the tail stages of this race, because again, a huge gap now between second and third. Uh, ever since Kyle Mitchell took that spot, he's just been absolutely gone. And meanwhile, uh, CRG Simon has been lapping even quicker, only extending his gap down to the rest of the field by even further. It's, it's now darn near 14 seconds. Yeah, I think Hit is, uh, I think it, maybe his tires are gone potentially. He's now actually got to worry about VSR Infamous. He's not even going to pick up the DRS off of Kowalski here. He's lost over a second over the course of a single lap, and that Force India is going to be closing up to him pretty quickly. Thankfully for his case, uh, for his sake anyway, uh, Infamous is not going to pick up the DRS here on this occasion, but I think Hit missing out on the DRS on Kowalski is really going to hit him. There you can see. Uh, the, the very uh, similar sort of gaps between Kowalski and Hit and Hit and Infamous. Uh, again, Zonta with multiple penalties, so I don't think these guys really need to worry about falling back behind Zonta. Looking at Snazzy Evening again, though, as uh, they're just coming to the end of lap 31, four laps to go, and it is less than two seconds between Snazzy Evening and TSR Bastek. We could see a last lap overtake for seventh position, I think. Yeah, absolutely brilliant stuff for Snazzy if he can pull that off. He's done brilliantly well to get to where he is, let alone uh, continuing to rise through the field. But another point on VBR hit, he can see that his pace is dropping off. He can see that others are clearly quicker than him. Now this starts to play into the mental game. Can he just keep a level head? Can he keep himself calm and say, I've got time between myself and 10th. I can just carry on where I am, keep it clean, don't add to the penalty count. Or will the fact that he's losing pace start to play on his mind? Uh, the, the mental game really cannot be understated. The pressure these guys are under, the prize they're gunning for, the all-important pro draft spot, and where that pro draft could lead. Is that what we were talking about before the race, before we got into the qualifying stage? So, yeah, that is going to be a big thing for VBR here to just try and keep under control whilst keeping the car under control and keeping it clean, obviously. But, you know, he's got to just keep the focus on where he is. He's at, looks like he's jumped oh, out of wow. the way of the Force India, so he didn't want the fight. That's, that's a fairly sensible thing. If you're just going to stone each other down and risk putting yourself and potentially someone else into the wall, you know, it's no, there's nothing wrong in exactly what he's just done. Let him go, because you know, if his tires are completely shredded, he won't have the grip he needs to keep the car behind him anyway. And he couldn't, you know, make a mistake, smash the brakes, bang, into the wall, and, he, and everything is then gone. He's still fit, he's still some, oh, what is a quick mouth, even before penalties, that's a good 20 ish seconds between himself and 10th position. So he's got time, and with only three mouths done on the board, he, he knows he just has to keep it clean. But it's the pressure of doing so, Simon, well, vaguely giving someone else a chance by adding a penalty. Nah. Um, just reminding us, he, I, I know what he's doing, he's reminding us he's in the race. Well, that's all. <laughs> yeah, so the mental game is a very big part of, of being at this stage in the esports competition. Just keeping your cool, keeping your focus. It's really, really important for these guys. Yeah, and I have to say, Simon's done an, an incredible job. I've, I said it before, I'll say it again. Simon, on his day, there are very few people in the world that can even keep up with him, never mind beat him. Mm. And uh, Simon is having his day today, no doubt about it. He took that early lead at the start of the race, and no, no problems since then. Again, he's picked up six seconds worth of time penalties, but who cares when you have a 15-second gap down to the car behind? He's almost got an entire pit stop between himself and Kyle Mitchell. And Kyle Mitchell is driving incredibly well. He's, he's yeah. really flying out there. So, And I think that 
highlights more so the performance from Simon than anything else, just on a completely other level as Kowalski now picks up uh, what I believe is his second three-second time penalty, if I'm not sure, if I'm not mistaken about that. This is the uh, penultimate lap of the race. It is going to be white flag this time by, but I think you were right about VBR hit, Chris. I think he's just consolidating the points that are available to him. Uh, he's got Zonta coming up to the back of him now, almost within DRS range, as they make their way down this DRS straight for the penultimate time in this race. But again, Zonta with a, a, an absolute deluge of penalties to deal with, at least six seconds. I think it may even be nine seconds for Zonta, and I think Hit only has three seconds worth of penalty, so uh, he can actually let Zonta even go through, I presume, and hold on to that fifth place position. Uh, even Infamous has penalties as well, too, so that could end up playing uh, playing a factor between uh, Infamous and Hit and Zonta, and uh, Bastek as well, I think, has a couple of penalties as well, too. Speaking of Bastek, Snazzy Evening is now less than seven tenths of a second behind Bastek. It is very, very close. We go on board, actually, with the McLaren. Fantastic timing on that one. Snazzy Evening right up to the back of Bastak now. He's not going to really have any overtake locations, of course, uh, but we've seen overtakes into turn eight before. He's going to be too far back, I think, on this occasion, Chris. He, he does pick up the DRS, of course, but it's not going to be quite enough. We move ahead to CRG Simon. He makes his way through the final chicane for the final time in this race, for the final time this week in the F1 Esports 2019 season. And it is CRG Simon that claims victory at the end of the race. A 16-second gap between himself and Kyle Mitchell, an utterly dominant performance. He could have pulled over and had a coffee. Yeah, yeah it's absolutely amazing performance as he had a CRG Simon. So this battle for seven continues, but a snazzy evening is just going to be thwarted, but only just considering the gap he's pulled back. That is an amazing performance here. Carl Mitchell comes over the line in second with Kowalski three. Infamous as uh, with the penalty adjustment in fourth hit five. Snazzy evening actually elevated to his sixth because of the penalties as, wow. this, as the board is then jumping around. Son to seven, Bassic eight, P1 L Brown nine. Rosberg, no, oh. at the very last, oh. at the very last, Morso was outside of that three second, but of course Rosberg picked up another one, didn't he? So Rosberg was not able to overcome that six second penalty that he had. I bet you if he hadn't have got that second one, that then he would have remained in the top ten. But Morso, by you know, by just by keeping consistent, not giving up, and you know, not having those penalties, that has put him in the uh, put him in the pound seat. Nicely done, nicely done indeed. Yeah, I, I got to say, uh, really happy for more so uh, gutted for Rosberg because uh, similar to Sebastian Job yesterday, you know, just yeah. right there on the edge. It's got to be so frustrating to know that you were the best of the rest, not quite in that top 10. Uh, but again, I have to say it. I said it on the other two days. I'll say it again. Just getting to this point is incredible. To just getting into this race is an unbelievable achievement. You know, that's something you want to put on your CV. Yeah. Yeah, entirely. You've had to fend off so many big names and you know, many hundreds, thousands of people that would have taken part in the, you know, the open qualifiers to get to the stage. To be even in the top 18, as you say, is an amazing achievement. So... As it stands at the moment, now we have an adjudication process to now take place mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, any post-race penalties that may apply. So, so uh, you know, a lot of penalties on the board uh, already for our drivers, but you know, there you are. So only a couple of drivers in that, uh, in what we can see there, there's more so Maloney not getting a penalty on the board. So, you know, well done for them. So as it stands at the moment, Simon on the top spot, Kyle Mitchell two, Kowalski three, Infamous four, hit five, Snazzy eating six, on to seven, Bassig eight, P1R, Brown nine, and more so rounding out the top ten with Rosberg, Melanie, Leclerc, and Button. Uh, unfortunately, not able to make it through this time, but still an adjudication process to follow. So we'll see what uh, that yields when that is complete. And hopefully, we'll have a chance to have a chat with our drivers if they uh, wish to come and come for an interview with us. That would be great. Uh, I just like to point out the gap between Morso and Rosberg. Again, that was for 10th position. The gap between Morso and Rosberg, 0.214 of oh. a second. So if Rosberg wow. had been a quarter of a second quicker to the finish line, he would be heading to the pro draft. That is the level of competition that is in F1 esports. Less than a quarter of a second between going to the pro draft and staying at home. That is incredible. So, and that's again, a, that's a testament to all of them, just how well they've had to drive, what level of competition they've had to face off 
this evening out. Well, and to get to this point, as we've mentioned, but you know, the, our driver's done brilliantly well in very, very difficult conditions as well. So, yeah, brilliant effort from everybody taking part this evening. Great, great effort. And with uh, you know, technical difficulties at the beginning, that's just going to add to the nerves and add to the pressure in a way because you, you know, the adrenaline is pumping, and it certainly was for us, but we were able to natter through it. So, you know, these guys have just got to kind of sit there and keep themselves focused. And when you just when you're just waiting for the inevitable to happen, it, it can really kind of mess with your head a bit. So, yeah, you know, they've had to, that to deal with as well. Yeah, the waiting is the hardest part, without question. <laughs> it's it's got to be so frustrating. Just wanting to get it over with, you know, because you you know, there's one of two possible outcomes. There's only two. You're either gonna make it or you're not gonna make it. Mm. And you know, you just want you just want to get it over with. You just want to get into it and get on with the job and uh, find out what what the uh, the gods have in store for you for today. <laughs> and yeah, that was another amazing race. Again, we got to see the full wet compound tires. It was maybe for only six, seven, eight laps or so that we saw the full wets before it became inters conditions. But then we 